Now, some of you may remember this uh, antenna from a few videos ago. It's a uh, 4G, 3G uh, biquad that uh, I utilise two different uh, measurements in the elements uh, to come up with uh, a multi-frequency biquad for the cellular networks. Um, I ended up uh, building this as a uh, dish feed with uh, dual biquads. And I did say in that video I was looking to improve things a little bit, see if we can get some more bandwidth out of it, etc. And uh, I have improved things, I'm uh, happy to report. It's taken me about three months of uh, prototyping and testing, but I've now come up with uh, a uh, updated version of this that uh, is not only 3G and is not only 4G, but now incorporates the uh, 5G uh, frequency band so it uh, has really improved things to what uh, this can do uh, keeping a similar size footprint I've changed a couple of the measurements slightly but uh, yeah I'm really pleased how this one's turned out so I want to share it with you um, as always there's a, a PDF in the description that has all the measurements in there but um, yeah it's taken me a few months but I'm impressed with the uh, build that I'm going to show you next so these are the uh, main parts of the antenna that we're going to be using. Again, I've got some of this brass brazing rod, 1.6 millimeters in diameter, really nice uh, stuff to work with. I've got some brass tubing here, and it's five millimeters in diameter. I've got two sizes that we're going to be using. I've got one that is 20 millimeters long, so this one's 20 millimeters, and a second one that is 14 millimeters long. So I've got those pre-cut already. Uh, I've got these M5 washers here. They are brass washers. And what we're going to be doing with these is soldering them on the middle of the tubing. So that's what we need to do first. I need to solder all these washers onto the brass tubing, the uh, long ones and the short ones. Get them roughly in the middle and then solder them in place. So that's the first job. Now the best way that I've found to do this is to hold the piece of tubing in the vise, get your measurements correct so that your washer is directly in the middle. Uh, if you look at these washers, uh, we've got a kind of a rounded side and a uh, flat side to these washers and uh, I've got the flat side laying down flat onto the jaws of the vise. Um, then use a small blowtorch, get some heat in there, mainly heat up the tubing and the heat will spread out to the uh, little washer. You'll lose a little bit of heat because this is uh, a metal vise but uh, once you've got it heated up just feed some solder in around the washer and it'll flow nicely and uh, that's the easiest way I found to uh, solder these in place. There we go, we've got a nice ring of solder all the way around there. Just let it cool, then remove it from the vise. You can clean off any excess like I've got there off with the Dremel afterwards. Now we're dealing with two wavelengths here, one at 41 millimeters and one at 30 millimeters. So I'm going to uh, measure off first uh, my first wavelength, which is 41 millimeters. So I'm starting at the end of the wire here, then I'm going to put a little mark where it ends just there so I can put a bend in there. Now I've got my mark there, I take my uh, needle nose pliers here, my favourite ones, and then put a nice right angle bend in there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take a strip of uh, masking tape. Um, I did use uh, originally when I was uh, prototyping this, I used uh, aluminium foil, but there really is no need, you just want some kind of packing to uh, hold the tube centre to the wire and hold it in place before you uh, solder the ends up. So masking tape is fine, it's a lot easier as well than the uh, aluminium foil. Just aim for the middle and wrap it round a few times to build it up. Now once you've got the uh, masking tape wrapped around, you just want to feed the tube on there and what we'll do when we get uh, all the tubes on and the uh, element made up we'll uh, flow some solder around here and around here to finish it off and that way we've then got a good uh, you know electrical connection to this part of the element and this part of the element next we're ready for the second uh, wavelength measurement which is 30 millimeters now i've got the 30 lined up with the inside of this wire here so i'm just going to put a little mark 
just there but we're not going to bend this until we get this smaller tube into position but uh, we'll just use a little mark just to uh, get it in the middle there and with the second piece of masking tape in place I'm just going to insert the smaller tube like so and now we can put a right angle bend in just there get my needle nose pliers lined up and get everything nice and straight and then we can put the next bend in place so next we need to put the second uh, larger one on this side opposite the first one in exactly the same way and now for the uh, final bend place like so now we just need to fit the uh, second small one and we've completed one half of the elements so next we're going to be flooding some solder down into the tube here to create an electrical connection between the tube and the brass brazing rod uh, this is one I've done previously and when I was prototyping this I used aluminium foil on the inside um, that also gave me uh, an electrical connection but it was a little bit more fiddly than the masking tape and um, there's not really any need to do that because we're going to create the electrical connection here so there's no need to have something conductive inside the tubing so I'm going to hook this up to the uh, helping hands and each one I'm going to flood it individually uh, I did get better with this as I progressed through my prototype types but uh, it's best to heat up the uh, wire first flood some tubing in there and then get the soldering iron around the top of the tube get some heat in there and it kind of just snaps together using surface tension like this one here get the soldering iron on the wire first just feed some solder in and start heating up that outer ring and just basically go around fill in and that's one side of the element completed so I now just have to make a second one now with this one I want to make it more of a uh, panel uh, antenna type rather than a uh, dish feed like I did with the uh, previous one and uh, I've got a piece of aluminium here it measures 150 millimeters by uh, 130 millimeters and I've got my four elements here uh, basically two antennas I'm going to have two connections so we can have some MIMO so I'm going to have two SMA connectors connecting these up and what I'm doing I'm just lying them on the piece of aluminium here uh, just to decide where I'm going to drill the holes for the SMA connectors so because the difference in uh, the size with this one is a little bit greater than the previous one they're going to be up a little bit like this uh, protruding upwards so I think that's going to work out really nice for a panel antenna so I'm just laying them on here to decide when I'm going to drill the holes for the SMA and you'll find it much easier to do this if you uh, find the center line of uh, your you know your piece of aluminium like I've got here so now I've got uh, four rectangles so one rectangle is for each element just makes it a lot easier to center things up when you're on a sheet of aluminium like this so basically I'm going to drill a hole just here and drill a hole just here for the SMA connector now as for the connections that I've chosen for this antenna I've chosen these uh, SMA connectors somebody asked me if I could uh, do a build incorporating these but uh, you know it's just the same as normal SMA connectors uh, just a slightly different thread on here but uh, connecting them up again it's a panel mount with uh, four holes for the screws but uh, what I've done for this is I've modified this one slightly uh, I've got a piece of tube in here uh, for the uh, main connection through the middle a little bit of uh, heat shrink tubing on there to insulate it from the back reflector and I've got some uh, solid brass brazing rod here for the ground this is just under 2.5 millimeters thick soldered it onto one of the holes so we're only going to be using three screws to uh, attach this and basically this 
goes through the two holes that I've uh, already drilled on here and uh, then we can uh, screw it onto the back there and as I said this is now insulated from the back reflector this is making contact with the back reflector but it will also make contact when we you know screw it down as well um, and then I'm going to solder on the uh, elements onto uh, both of those trim them down to the uh, measurement that we need we don't need them quite as long as that so that's what I'm going to be using to connect to this antenna and to get the holes the correct distance, I just took uh, another one of these SMA connectors, put some, uh, soldered some tubing onto there, and uh, I made it a little bit uh, wider as well to take into consideration the uh, heat shrink tubing, a little bit of masking tape on there, and I just placed that through that main hole that I already pre-drilled, and then just used that as a jig to get uh, the position for the other hole where uh, we connect this part up to so I've just used another SMA connector as a template essentially now I've cut the legs off to the uh, size that I want I'm looking for a 15 uh, millimeter gap between the main driven element and the back reflector I've also got these little standoffs to uh, epoxy in place to add a little bit more support to the elements themselves because they are quite heavy um, we'll put them in later but uh, I've got these little cork blocks here that I'm going to use uh, and just place the uh, element into position and lay it flat on top there and uh, solder them in place i pre-tinned everything pre tin the tops of these and pre tin the end of the element it's going to be fiddly but uh, should be straightforward now what i'm going to do is solder them in one at a time because uh, if i come in with my soldering iron to solder the second one on i'll probably end up desoldering everything so i'm going to solder this top one in place first so that one's soldered in place and now I'm going to uh, position the second one now the second one I'm going to solder the opposite leg first so it's this bottom leg here get some heat in, feed some solder in, get it all flowing so now that I've got that bottom leg soldered in place, what I can do now is solder the opposites because uh, we've got some stability now with them resting on the cork and I can go in and do the opposites. I'm trying to show you this on camera as well, it is uh, tricky but uh, hopefully you get the idea. Just that if you try to do it all at once, you will probably uh, get them falling all over and desoldering themselves. So here they are all soldered in place, and I have to say it looks uh, very, very pretty. But uh, I'm going to uh, epoxy the, these little standoffs in uh, each corner just to add a little bit more strength because they are pretty heavy and they're only held on with the uh, solder points at the moment. So a little bit of strength with the standoffs, but... Uh, yeah i love the way this looks now here is the finished antenna and i personally think this is a thing of beauty but of course it's no good looking good it also has to uh, work well so let's take it over to the test bench and take a look at this antenna now just before we do one last thing i want to uh, mention is a couple of people have mentioned it in previous videos that i've released my uh, normal plug-in for my uh, sweep generator is being calibrated at this minute. I had to uh, add a new amplifier to it and a couple of other bits and pieces uh, that uh, failed on it and now it's been off uh, being calibrated by a friend of mine so I'm using all my backup plugins um, it's just that we can't look at uh, a full continuous spectrum say from uh, 500 megahertz all the way up to 4 gigahertz all at one go I've got to swap the plugins in and out so we're looking at the higher frequencies first so here we are just uh, focused in on the uh, higher frequencies then. We've got uh, these two dips uh, here where we've got uh, two responses. And this first dip is right bang in the middle of uh, the 5G range at 3.3 gigahertz. Unfortunately um, for 5 gigahertz we have two dips that we want to aim for. And uh, I think it's 3.6 gigahertz the uh, second dip. But unfortunately we haven't been able to achieve that. But for the one that's mainly used in the UK at the moment anyway at 3.3 gigahertz that's a really really nice dip and if I move the cursor all the way over here we can see we've got 2.7 gigahertz there 
to 2.8 gigahertz in that dip I would really prefer this to be moved that way a little bit but that's certainly nice for the uh, 4G the higher speeds at 4G so let me unplug this plug in then and uh, then we'll take a look at the lower frequencies but so far I'm pleased with how this is looking on the network analyzer so here we are looking at the uh, lower frequencies then 2.5 gigahertz all the way down to 1700 megahertz there I've got the cursor on 2.2 gigahertz a really nice frequency response there at 2.2 gigahertz and if I move the cursor along again over here 1.8 gigahertz sorry yeah 1.8 gigahertz 1700 megahertz around there I've got a nice peak at 1.8 gigahertz so again two nice frequency responses there in uh, the kind of mid-range frequencies so let me uh, remove this plug-in and put the uh, plug-in in and see what it's like uh, around 1 gigahertz to uh, 700 uh, megahertz now here we are on the network analyzer again and we're scanning from uh, 300 megahertz over here um, up to uh, 1.2 gigahertz over here you can see we've got this first dip right in the 800 megahertz spectrum here that's a uh, very nice dip there um, we've also got this uh, second dip over here which uh, is at uh, 400 megahertz and that's probably because of the way I've built this antenna you know building uh, different wavelengths into one antenna is probably what is causing that but this dip here is going to work really well if you're wanting uh, you know 800 megahertz or the faster frequencies drop out and you have to uh, fall back down to uh, the lower frequencies where the speed is slower but yeah a nice all-around antenna I'm really pleased with this design so as we saw on the network analyzer a nice little uh, multi-band uh, antenna then um, I mean if you're talking about gain this has probably got about 14 dB of gain somewhere around that uh, mark um, you know with all the add-ons that we've done with this antenna um, using quite a thick uh, aluminium backing as well I think this is uh, two millimeters might even be three no yeah three millimeters but um, it's a nice antenna and uh, I have got some ideas to uh, improve it further because I would like to hit that uh, 3.7 gigahertz uh, band further up in the uh, 5G frequencies um, a couple of ideas off the top of my head is because I've laid it out like this and all my prototypes were done as a single bi-quad and um, I was thinking again of uh, you know a dish uh, feed for this but because I've laid it out like this as a panel I'm kind of thinking now whether we could add parasitic elements to this get a bit more gain out of it and also um, hit those uh, upper frequencies um, let me just hang on a minute now when we're talking about parasitic elements we're talking about something like this like you would have on a uh, Yagi for instance and I've made antennas um, with these uh, incorporated before and they do change the frequency a little bit uh, make an adjustment but what they uh, also do is add a little bit more gain they focus the beam width of the antenna as well and because I've got it laid out like this you could even have one in the middle there and that was will be catering for both of these uh, antennas or you could have four positioned in the middle of the uh, quad section like so and uh, you could also have them on the outside to uh, change the beam width slightly as I say so there's a lot of potential uh, for upgrades for this antenna but uh, it will be a while away because I've got a few more uh, antennas in uh, in the queue before I come back to this one but uh, certainly things we can do to try and hit that uh, 3.7 gigahertz for instance possibly add a little bit more gain as well so if you did enjoy the video please give it a uh, thumbs up if you want to help support the channel then please uh, feel free to pop over to patreon link in the description and uh, you know if you've got any comments or questions drop them below i'll do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me on the next one